Okay, to start this off, I want to set the record straight about something I said near the end of the last video. I mentioned the games that the Speed Gamers were going to play in the Mega Man Marathon, and I just want to warn you, this is not the full list. Of course, there's no way they could fill 72 hours with just those games. It's just part of the list. No one knows what the full list is going to be, but I am going to keep you apprised when the list actually comes out. I can't wait to figure out what's on the menu of the Mega Man buffet. And I would also like to come back on another thing I said a few weeks ago about Mewtwo, Latias, and Latios being catchable in Hard Gold and Soul Silver. This is still unconfirmed. This is merely a rumor. They, there was n no information like, uh, about this in Koro Koro, so for now we are still in the dark regarding these. So now I am out on Route 46, so there are a few trainers to beat and a few items to get, and then after that we can move on with the story. Well, whatever little story the Pokemon games have, anyway, it's always the same story. Beat eight gym leaders, oh yeah, and there's this evil team that you gotta beat too, and then beat the Elite Four, and then encounter the champion, which is always someone you have never met at all. So yeah, if you play Pokemon for the story, you got issues. If you play any game for the story, in fact, I mean, sure, there are games like uh, Final Fantasy, for example, that have a lot of focus on the story, but they're still essentially games. So, well, if you really want a story that bad, if you play the game for the story first, the graphics second, and then the, the gameplay third, well, I may I suggest a book or maybe a movie? But this especially applies to Pokemon since, well, there's practically no story to speak of, well, except maybe in Mystery Dungeon, but that's another thing entirely. If you want a Pokemon game with a story, I strongly recommend those two. So, yeah, I mentioned the, the objective of beating the champion, and you know what? I got to thinking, you know how there are five known champions right now? You've got Blue, you've got Lance, Steven, Wallace, Cynthia. You know, the fact that there are five of them and undoubtedly more of them will come at a later date, well, it sort of dilutes the, the meaning of being a champion since there are so many of them. It's like in boxing, you've got like four champions for every category. Which one is the best of them? Nobody knows. Well, actually, the experts probably know, but I'm no boxing expert, so it's all a little confusing. So here we have five champions, and no way to determine who really is the champion of champions. Well, as far as the games go, of course, because there might be a an answer in the anime or the manga, but, well, the anime, no way am I going to sit through the equivalent of a week and a half non-stop of some of the worst TV ever produced. No way, so I'll pass. And as for the manga, well, there's that little thing about um, my national flag not being a red circle on a white background. Instead, I have the way cooler red maple leaf on a white background. So, I'm essentially left with just the games, and since the game lore doesn't provide any answer, I am going to have to go with the good old way to decide this, pure gameplay. Okay, she's giving me her number right now, but I'm going to refuse, for the simple fact that if I want to fight her again, I have to go all the way through the dark cave again, no matter where I am in the world, I am going to have to get through that cave, until at least I'm able to reach a black thorn, but that's not going to happen for quite a while, so no, I'm not taking your number. And as for the champion thing I was talking about, Lance, Steven, and Wallace are all automatically out. They use monotype teams for the most part, especially Wallace. So, yeah, you can see the inherent problem with monotype teams. It's all too easy for a single Pokémon to sweep your entire team. Well, Steven has, um, rocks and steels, but then there's that small matter of him having a special sweeping Agron. I am not making this up. 
Look up its moveset and you will find three special moves. That is unacceptable for a champion. So screw Steven and Lance. Well, he's got three Dragonites, three Pokemon of the exact same species, and then he's got two more Pokemon with but with the uh, quadruple weaknesses, okay. So he wants to give me a berry, so I guess I'm just going to head there once I can. So that leaves us with two champions with well-rounded teams, Blue and Cynthia. And the decision isn't exactly difficult to make here either. I mean, Blue te Blue's team isn't that bad, but Cynthia's team is just really stacked. You've got Lucario, you've got Garchomp, because that's something else. She's using an Uber for Pete's sake. Although it does have Giga Impact, but that's still way better than a special sweeping Agron, so I'm going to let that one slide. And there are also other great Pokémon like Nilotic, Rose Rage, Spiritomb. Only Gastrodon is really sort of the weak link, and it's not half bad if you know how to use it. And I don't recall uh, her Gastrodon's... Wait, that, wait a minute, that's not the Pokémon Center? I was heading for the Pokémon Center and I go into the Pokémon Art instead. Well, I apologize for that little, um, that little distraction. But anyway, in Platinum, she swaps that uh, Gastrodon for a uh, Togekiss. That is what I call a winning trade. So congratulations, Cynthia. You just have been elected the champion of champions by exactly one person. Yeah, it really matters a lot, but rule number one, I am always right, and rule number two, if I am wrong, refer to rule number one. So now I'm depositing all that junk I just picked up, so because I don't want to run out of space in my bag again, and incidentally, Cherry Grove is my last stop on my surf exploration tour. There's someone in that pond here, I'm just going to talk to him. I wonder if there's something further to the left. I remember there being something, but it's been a while since I have played that game for the last time, so my memory may be a little bit foggy. So here I'm facing a wild tentacruel, and the reason why I'm not flipping out over this is that I met a few of them while grinding my Lapras, and they did a lot more damage than that when I was just at level 20-21, so those levels really did a lot of good to Lapras. But anyway, now I guess it's time to see what that guy is going to give me, because he's certainly going to give me something if he's that far out in the in the pond. So, Mystic Water! So, yeah, I, I do need it, so I'm definitely going to take it. So I'm going to give it to Lapras, of course, and that will leave the Quick Claw in my bag, but since Gengar still isn't holding anything, well, I'm going to give it to it, despite the fact that, well, it already has 110 base speed, so a Quick Claw isn't going to do a whole lot of good. But it's still better than nothing, you never know when you're going to encounter something like a level 32 electrode or something. So now I'm just going to check out if there is anything over there, and I am not going to find out for another while, but this city, Cherry Grove, was the last destination in my tour, so in the next video you can expect me to get to Route 38, where I'm going to attempt to catch a Farfetch'd for my HM Slave purposes, since it can learn both cut and fly, so this will signal the end of my Bell Sprouts career as an HM slave. Nope, there's nothing over there, so it's time to head back to the shore and head back to Ecruti to continue the story. And I gotta say, the next video will be part 50, and I'm still not really that far along in the game. Someone said that it might take 200 videos for me to complete that game. And, well, if it takes that long, hey, why not? I'm up for it!